Good morning, everyone. Today we are celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, the official date, the traditional date of Epiphany is January 6th, but following in the, uh, in, in the custom of many Episcopal parishes, uh, we are going to celebrate it uh, on the nearest Sunday, which would be today. Uh, and it's an important feast, and in order to give it the, uh, give it the importance it deserves, uh, we are going to be celebrating it today. I'd like to extend a special welcome to all who are who might may be viewing us on Facebook who are not regular worshipers at our parish. Want to give you a particularly warm welcome this morning. Uh, everything that we that is needed for worship is on the slides. And if you have questions, put them in, in the chat feature, which is being monitored by our Zoom support person. So um, so we are ready to start worship with our uh, opening hymn. Perfect light. 
Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. Sorry. You alone are the most high Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come, shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and verses 10 through 14. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence and dear shall their blood be in his sight. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you 
and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. <laughs> Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may, go, may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving God, whose light shines in our hearts, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our granddaughter turned two recently. And while she's still delightful, it's also been an interesting reminder for both Bob and I of the so-called terrible twos. <clears throat> From the viewpoint of a grandparent, I see it rather differently than I did as a parent. As a parent, I saw it as a challenge to our authority, which needed to be corrected and discouraged. And I think I saw it that way because of my own insecurities as a parent. As a grandparent, much more secure in knowing who I am, which is one of the great gifts of getting older, I see it in a much more positive light. It's not about rebellion, but an assertion of identity and autonomy. 
her loud, no, 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 is not so much a challenge to authority as it is the developmental need for her to learn how to set boundaries and learn what she can do and what she can't. Of course, it also helps that we can send her home with her parents. However, there is a downside, which takes a rather noisy form of expression. The irony is that often she does need adult guidance, of course, with things that are either beyond her developmental stage or beyond her altogether. Things that are dangerous, things that will hurt her, sometimes seriously. But she's determined to refuse any form of help, to try to exert her will over everything. And she is furious when her parents and grandparents step in for her own good. She's little and unable to realize that healthy personal autonomy is not the same as going it completely alone. She can't appreciate that when we intervene, we are looking out for her best interests. But as she grows older and matures, of course, she will come to understand when to accept help, just as her big brother does today. I thought of her when, I, when reading today's gospel. The word epiphany means to shine forth or to make known. God knows when we humans need a helping hand to go beyond our limitations. And one way God provides it is in the form of revelation so that we can know God's nature. God doesn't do that just for our benefit. God wants to be in relationship with us and wants us to know how much we are loved. So you might say revelation is the original win-win, but human beings often don't recognize it as such. Not to be insulting, but our need for power and control over our circumstances is so strong, we sometimes act like toddlers, resisting the reality that God is present and active in our lives and wants only what is best for us. Enter in the, our story today, Herod the Great, designated by Rome as the king of the Jews. He was not always the monster he became toward the end of his life, but like most rulers of his time, he had a definite drive for absolute power and control. For reasons we don't exactly know, the, his drive, that drive became hideously distorted, showing up as paranoia and instability. He was convinced that everyone was conspiring against him and had his most beloved wife executed along with several of his sons. He became so well known for his ruthlessness that the emperor himself, Augustus Caesar commented, it is better to be a pig than one of Herod's sons. That is the Herod we see in this gospel, determined to pull all the strings in his kingdom and as prone to tantrums as a two-year-old, but with far more deadly results. Herod was so involved in the machinations of, his po of power that he had no use or interest in God. Now the Magi, are, as the, are at the opposite end of the spectrum. As pagan priests of the ancient Near East, they were astrologers and dream interpreters, seekers who wished to know the will of the gods through stars. It was their study of the stars that led them to undertake the long journey to Jerusalem to confer with Herod, whom they naively believed would be just as interested as they in meeting the new and future king of the Jews. The Magi believed human destiny was ultimately in the hands of their all good main God. And it was useless as best to try and chart our own way according to our own agendas. So naturally having seen in the stars, the birth of a great and good leader, they wanted to know him and possibly learn from him as he grew. But by their pursuit of knowledge and truth, they, they naively put themselves in great danger. If we take a step back from the historical aspects of, the, of this gospel story, 
we find a symbolic representation of two aspects of human nature. On one hand, we have our human intelligence. Because we're made in the likeness of God, we have understanding, creativity, and the ability to make changes to our circumstances and environment. At best, at our best, we are caring to others and are good stewards of creation. But at other times, we give in to the temptation to control, to use our brothers and sisters and the goodness of creation as objects to be manipulated for our own ends. We forget that we too are God's creatures and not God. And like a toddler who does not know when he or she are, is in over their heads, we turn away from God to preserve our supposed independence. We become deaf and blind to God's self-revelation, God's outreach to us, sometimes acting in ways that are dangerous for our spiritual health. On the other hand, we have the gift of our inner wisdom, which goes beyond mere intelligence. Our desire to seek out purpose and meaning in our lives, to be part of something greater than ourselves. At its best, this leads us to God, brings out in us a desire to be in right relationship with God and to know God's dream for us and for all humanity. But unless our quest for God is firmly anchored in God's revelation, we can become spiritual dabblers looking for a magic formula that will explain it all for us. Rather than engaging with the mystery of God through relationship and accepting that we will not fully understand God and God's ways in this world, we look for easy answers. Now the Magi were wise, not just because of their knowledge of the stars, but because they were willing to invest years of religious practice and study and to take risks to seek out God's signs. The Epiphany story shows us these two aspects of human nature in conflict. Herod is a caricature of our desire for control, while the pagan Magi are a portrait of our inner wisdom. Herod's actions are driven by fear, which is the biggest enemy of the spiritual life. Fear drowns out our inner wisdom if we allow it to. It makes us unwilling to trust and therefore to risk. It makes us more likely to follow our own agenda than look to a loving God for direction. Herod flat out panicked, ultimately making an unthinkable decision to kill the newborn king of the Jews and deprive himself and his people of their Messiah. Of course, he did not succeed. The actions of the Magi stand in sharp contrast. When they received a message in a dream, warning them not to return to Herod, they didn't fear, they trusted. They accepted God's helping hand, traveled another road, and lived to continue their search for truth and meaning. Caught in the middle are the chief priests and the scribes. They knew when the, where the Messiah would be born. They gave information, Herod the information he needed, but are also strangely passive. Perhaps Herod didn't explain why he wanted to know, or perhaps they were too frightened of the consequences of crossing a tyrant to pursue it. Perhaps they shut their minds and hearts to the meaning of the appearance of the Magi to stay safe using the try and true, tried and true cliche, go along to get along. If that is the case, let's just take a moment to imagine what they missed. Imagine what it would have meant for them to know that the age old prophecies had been fulfilled in their lifetime. What bitter irony that pagan priests showed more faith in God's revelation than the temple priesthood. There's a lesson here for each one of us. So many of the problems we experience in life are rooted in trying to control our circumstances and other people 
and in trying to convince ourselves and other people that we matter and that we are free. By attempting to go it alone, we can cause ourselves and others a great deal of grief. Herod, ultimately, is a cautionary tale. We see the ruin Herod made of his life, trying to get hold onto power and influence so that he could feel that he was important, that he mattered. We see how, how the impressive building projects he undertook were all, in a way, monuments to himself. It was never enough to extinguish his fear. And it earned him so much hatred from the people he governed that in the end, he was not buried in the beautiful mausoleum he built for himself, but in a cave nearby because he feared his body would be desecrated. Of course, we are not like Herod. But each time we choose our way over God, we miss another opportunity to know how much God loves and cares for us. We miss that God wants to be in relationship with us even more than we want to be in relationship with God. We miss knowing that our lives have meaning even when we do not completely understand God or what God intends. We substitute the false freedom of going our own way to the real freedom from fear our loving God provided in Jesus Christ. The life and ministry of Jesus shows us the wisdom of trust in our loving God and openness to God's action in our lives. Following the example of Jesus, who Paul calls the wisdom of God, is the antidote to fear and the way to true freedom. Jesus had the last word over sin and death, and all who follow in his way will share in his eternal life. As we begin a new year, my wish for you is that you will come to know, if you do not already, how deeply you are loved by God. Because knowing God's love leads us to risk trusting in God. And trust in God leads to freedom from fear, from the ups and downs of life. May the light of Epiphany illuminate our hearts and minds so that we may come to recognize the signs of God's presence in our lives and follow where they lead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Let us profess our faith in the tradition of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, Anna, our pastor, and all who minister at St. Martin's. 
We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Jared, our governor, and Mike, our mayor. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for Marcus, Richard, Steve, and Kristen, Bill, Mike, Michelle, and her family, Shelby, Morgan, Allie, Mary Ann, Mike, Joy and Todd, Ken, Tom and Helen, Larry and Peggy, Melanie, Bob, Brett, Carlos, Daryl, and Peter. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for the repose of the soul of Lauren Reeds. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. A couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, good morning to everyone who joined us. Uh, since we began our service. Um, I just want to remind you that Compline will resume uh, on this starting this Wednesday evening. Uh, took a little break between uh, around the Christmas season, but um, Christmas celebration, but we will be back on Wednesday. Uh, the other thing is I want to let you know is that I will be sending out this morning um, an Epiphany House Blessing, which perhaps many of you are familiar with, the chalking of the door. Um, so I'll, I'll send that out with instructions for how to do it if you're not familiar with it, and uh, a prayer. Um, you can do it anytime between now and the actual celebration of Epiphany on Wednesday. Mara, are there any other announcements we need to make? No? Okay. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you, not have loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. 
Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, we pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Loving God during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. to the world rejoicing in the power of the spirit alleluia alleluia thanks be to god alleluia alleluia thank you everyone thank you for everyone who who uh, participated today please stay and uh, socialize a bit during our virtual coffee hour <laughs> <laughs>